Hello everyone, my name is Kenneth Bruni and this is going to be the lab 2 for SN207 Programming for Engineers. So this is going to be the presentation outline. In fact, this is a very short PowerPoint presentation. We are going to look at the installation of Python, installation of VS Code, installation of um, an extension for VS Code and we are going to write some code and that's going to be your first Python code for some of you. So an installation guide, PDF material and a video will be provided. And I believe you probably might have watched that video even before now. So in order to code in Python or you start coding in Python, um, use the GitHub link below to assess the course materials for the lab. All right, so you are quite familiar with this because in the first lab video when we're looking at the installation we got up to this point now what i want to do over here is to kind of take you through some few things even before we start our labs so over here i'm going to click anywhere here and once again i'm going to create a new file so i'll click on this and i'll call this new file my app.py and i'll press enter so remember every python file will have the .py extension so whichever name you choose you ended up with a .py and I'll suggest you use the exact naming conventions I'm using over here. So inside of this particular window, we are going to start using print because you are quite familiar with print. So once again, because of IntelliSense, I don't need to type everything. Immediately I type PR, I get the option to get print and I'll press enter. Now inside of this, I'm going to use a single quotation mark. So you can see I have a single quotation mark over here and I'm going to type in my name. So this is my name, Kenneth Bruni, and I'll do a control S to save this. Now I want to run this code and there are two ways of running this code. Once again, let me just close this. There are two ways of running this code. We can do what we already know, which is by clicking on this button, which says run Python file. And once I click on this, you could see that the terminal gets activated and we have the code running over here. All right, so let me just pull this up a little bit. Let me run it again. And my, my and of course my machine is behaving um, a little bit weird, but then we get a point. We see Kenneth Bruni really being printed out over here in our terminal. Now, the other way, to run this code and once again let me just type in clear in the terminal to clear the terminal the other way to run this code is to come inside of the terminal and we are going to type in python then space and the name of the application in this case the name of the application is my app dot pi so when i press enter it gets executed and it runs and the kind of logic we are writing inside of this my app.py is to print Kenneth Bruni over here. Now, for those of you using the Mac OS, I think you need to type in Python 3 and the name of the app, in which case it's going to be my app.py. If I run it, I'm going to catch an error. But for those of you using Mac, you need to type in Python 3. And you are typing in Python 3 because you could see that you already have an older version of Python, which is about Python 2.7, which is already pre-installed. And you are now going to use Python 3. So you need to tell your system that you are using Python 3. All right, so we are good to go. But for the purposes of the rest of the labs, we are going to run our code using this button. And I think this is very simple for everyone to follow along. So you could see that we are using print and at least it's kind of intuitive, exactly what print is doing because Whatever thing we type in here, we see it's being displayed in the terminal. Now let's look at another example. And over here, I'm also going to type in print. And inside of this, I'll bring in double quotation mark. And I'll type in University of Ghana. And once again, I'll do a control S to save. So now we have on line one, print into brackets. And inside of it, we have a single quotation mark and my name, Kenneth Bruni. You can use your own name. Then in, on the second line, we have print, okay, parenthesis, and inside of a double quotation mark, 
we have University of Ghana. Now, when I run this by clicking this, you could see that we have these two sets of instructions being executed at the same time. But really what happens in here is Python will execute line one before it comes to line two. And based on that execution order, we see that line one, which says print and it Bruni gets printed first before print University of Ghana gets printed. Now, the whole point I'm trying to prove here is whichever thing we have inside of the quotation mark, whether it is a single quote or a double quote, it virtually does the same thing. Now, later on in the course of these labs, you are going to see instances where it is important and necessary we use a single quotation mark. And there are instances we use a double quotation mark. Now, there's also one thing I'll need to share with you before we move on to doing the actual things okay and this is what we refer to as a comment so if i am to first of all bring in the pound symbol or the hash in front of any of the lines over here okay and clearly you could see that the color changes and that's basically one of the features vs code is also giving us so that visually we can actually see that there are some changes going on over here now, when I save this and run this program once again, unlike the first instance, you can see that I don't see Kenneth Bruni being printed out over here. Now, there's a new program I'm running, and this is the output I'm getting. And for clarity's sake, let me just clear the terminal and run it once again. And we can see that I only have University of Ghana. So the question is, what is actually happening? All that we have done is we have commented this line and that's what we have on line one. Now, whenever you bring a pound symbol in front of any line in Python, then we are commenting it, okay? All that we are trying to tell the system is skip this line, don't execute whatever thing you have over here, and move on to the next or the next executable thing you have. In that same way, if I'm to also bring in the hash symbol over here and do control S, and run this you could see that nothing gets executed because we don't have anything or any logic in here but this is not going to be the use of the comments once again as we move along we are definitely going to touch on the real use cases where we are going to use comments and stuff like that but for now let's just have it in mind that we can print kenneth bruni and we can print university of ghana you can print your name you can print your age or any other thing you may want to print and once you are done with that and you run this, you could see that everything we had wanted to print displays over here. Now, before I end this video, let me touch on briefly on what print is actually doing. Intuitively, we know that print is actually printing our names. But what actually happens is, remember I made mention of the fact that Python is a high level language. So it has some set of vocabulary and print is one of them that at a human level or at a high level we humans understand and it is going to interpret this into some machine code some zeros and one signals that the cpu would understand and execute now what this print actually does is print is actually a function and when i hover around print you will see that it has into brackets function over here and it does some few things over here now these are actually some of the reasons why you also need vs code in your programming journey because you realize that it gives you a little bit of help in terms of the things you should know now what print does over here is print is a function and later on we are going to write our own functions but in order for us to understand it for now a function is basically going to give us some functionality so the functionality that we have in print is such like that whichever thing we put inside here put it in an output terminal for us okay or put it in an output device for us now currently we haven't connected any output device to our system so for which reason it is going to be our terminal and this is going to be the fundamentals of rewriting code and trust me these are some of the things you see with atm systems and stuff like that whenever you type in your pin your name displays it is a terminal or more or less a console application in some programming languages all right so this is going to be the first video of this lab and in the second video 
I'm going to show you some interesting things and how you write very interesting programs. Thank you very much and hope to see you in the next video.